Jan and I lived in this uh, 5,000 square foot loft and we had a printmaking studio, a wood shop, um, I had a thousand square feet painting studio and you know we did all our own plumbing and our own electric and everything like that. Uh, Flushing Avenue at Bedford Avenue there was really dicey back then. And, you know, it's just the G train was the go nowhere train. Never, nothing ever happened there. But one night we were coming home from the movies. We were standing on the G platform at the Lorimer Street stop and nobody's there. It's just an empty, we're waiting 20 minutes, pacing back and forth. We're starving. We were broke, you know, just trying to get back home. Jan and I aren't standing together. And I see this guy with this really nice leather coat. And I knew my leather because I was a handbag designer. Go straight up to Jan, right into his face, and put a gun in his chest and say, Give me your money, man. Give me all your money. And Jan, very cool, was like, Hey, man, I don't have any money. He thought Jan was by himself. And so I pipe up and I go, hey man, we're artists. We don't have any money. And he noticed that we realized we were together. And I was like, there's a man on the platform with a gun. There's a man. And I said like, there's a man. And I started singing this really loud. There's a man on the platform with a gun. And then exactly what I wanted to do was to get away from Jan. He did, but then he pointed the gun at me and he said, shut up you and I was like, there's a man on the platform with a gun. I just couldn't stop singing this. <laughs> and he's like, I'm going to shoot you. But she puts his hands like this. He's like shooting me at the last second. He points his gun down. The gun goes off. The sound was insane. The bullet hit the platform, ricocheted off and grazed my leg. And I looked down and there was a blood, like I could see blood, but all of a sudden everybody started like screaming. It was chaos. It was, you know, people were like, ah, the guy was chasing us around the pole. <laughs> we didn't know what to do. So we got, you know, we made our way, ran to the stairway. And at the bottom of the stairs were three guys with guns going, don't move. And we're like, we're the, we're the victims. Little did we know that uh, that was the headquarters for the transit authorities robbery division. And they heard the gunshot and came and they finally find this guy in a bodega and his gun is stashed behind a cereal box. And we are stuck at the police station there on Lorimer street and it was like for hours in the middle and it was already like two o'clock they were and they were like you have to be here until you know we know we're, we've got this guy we want you to ident identify him tonight they put us back in the same location almost so we could identify him and i was like i know that's a guy because that's his coat and jan was like i know that's that guy because it's his gold tooth jan's father was a dental technician Thank God I was wearing Park Avenue pantyhose because the bullet grazed and it was, the pantyhose didn't break. And, and the next day I thought, oh my God, what a good story. I went, I, I researched to find out who was made the Park Avenue pantyhose. It was like the Dwayne Reed, you know, store brand or something. And I took, called them up and, and I said, I've got a great commercial for you. <laughs> but they didn't think that was really good advertisement for their brand at all.